welcome back to our channel as real as you and uh, for people who survive you guys you, you guys going to like this video and who did not see us we're talking about uh, people's stories business stories success uh, failure so I hope you're gonna enjoy this show because we're right now in one of the northwest suburbs of Chicago and called Lincolnshire it's a very cozy place to live not cheap but it's a very nice place to live. But on top of it, uh, this uh, village has excellent places to eat. And one of these places is Starfish Sushi, and that's the owner, Max. Uh, and we're gonna talk about his business, what makes him successful, why people always coming back. Because if you're gonna look at the reviews, Yelp or any other reviews, TripAdvisor, it's one of the, the most highly rated place. Uh, for traditional Japanese, Korean uh, food, as well as American food. So that's makes them unique. So, hi Max, and uh, welcome back to our channel. We would like to ask you a couple of questions. So, uh, you are, you, uh, you were born as well as I was, not in the United States. No. Uh, I was born in uh, South Korea, Seoul. South Korea. So and, uh, capital. I came here. I immigrated to the United States in 1973 when I was eight years old. That was a long time ago. That's a long, long time ago. Um, Did you came to Illinois or came to different states? Yeah, actually, we first uh, arrived here in Chicago. Uh, uh, my aunt. And my uncle was actually living here in Chicago, and they're the one who invited us from Korea to come to the United States. So we were here for about six to eight months. And uh, my father, well, he was a general contractor mm -hmm. at that time. And his job would just take them all over the states, and we moved around a lot. When I was uh, so uh, Max said uh, you, uh, you're the head chef here. Yeah, yes I am. I'm head chef in Starfish. Mm -hmm. And how long you work? Um, in the sushi. The sushi industry and with Max. Uh, yes. uh, I do sushi almost over 20 years now. Uh, and the Starfish work the, uh, around two years now. What makes you choose this place over other places? Because uh, I know the Max about a long oh. time. Who doesn't know the Max? <laughs> yeah, he's very famous. And uh, actually, yeah, he's a big daddy. He's kind of, you know, he worked a long time the sushi, so I know him. Yeah, I really want to work with the Max, but but no, it's a different way, you know. <laughs> yeah, my sushi style is like this, but Max style is like this. So, anyways, I'm very very honored to work with Max now. So. And but uh, uh, I was told by Max you were involved deeply in creating the menu so your style sushi is I mean, he let you do your style sushi not only his style sushi so he let you be creative right yeah exactly but me and max are gonna be mix and match we're trying to more creative more you know yeah, yeah so we're trying to always what makes you came to the restaurant business? Well, when I was uh, uh, 15 years old, well, you know, our, our family we were poor. You know, we, were not, we were not even middle class. We were uh, really poor. Uh, so I started uh, looking for a job when I was 15 while I was going to school. And at that time, my uh, middle brother, uh, James, he was working in a Japanese restaurant in Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Green City. Uh, yeah. And <clears throat> it was one of the largest Japanese steakhouse in the U.S. Back in the days. Back, well, I think it still is because, uh, you know, they have 24 mm -hmm. tables. Oh, that's a lot. 24 tables and no other Japanese steakhouse that I know of has 24 tables. I moved to Miami um, because they have one location in Mi Miami, South Miami, mm -hmm. and uh, I was working down there for about a year, year and a half, and 
Miami, you know, it's a nice place to visit, but it's not a nice place to live. <laughs> Why so? <laughs> so South Miami, it's a lot of money over there. Oh yeah, um, you know, summertime is just so hot. And when you're cooking in front of the hot grill, oh my gosh, it's just really, really, really difficult. And when you're wearing glasses, all of grease and everything, uh, it's it's not an easy job. It's no listen. If you would have an easy job, you wouldn't be successful as you are. I mean, nothing comes like not nothing given to anybody. Yeah, so you work, you work your way up. You work hard, and I know you for about what 10, 12 years, yeah. personally, and you own the restaurant, and you still I see you often at your uh, with the chefs making the sushi. So obviously you enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I enjoy. Um, I enjoy making things. Uh, I enjoy prepping things, and I enjoy teaching the chefs. Um, you know, I, I like. I like seeing them grow and mature and get more experience and open up their own business and try to succeed in in the restaurant business. Are you still the person <laughs> who ch uh, who choose the products and buy the products and, and well, choose the places? Uh, now I, I have um, you know head chefs, second chefs that has been working with me and I've been going through with them and showing them you know what we need, how and what, uh, how to tell whether it's good or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're constantly uh, communicating with each other about different products to get better products uh, quicker. Um, for a better price, mm -hmm. uh, for a higher quality, uh, we get now we get our fish uh, six days a week. That's a fresh fish. Six days a week. So I don't know how more fresher you can get. <laughs> you can't get any fresher. And like, uh, don't get me wrong. I love sushi, and, uh, and knowing in fact I'm from Russia, but I love sushi, and I know for a fact you're one place and and i've been in a lot of different sushi places across the united states over the years but you're only one place where any day of the week i can come in and ask for uni and you will have the sea urchin how different was business back then when you opened up the first person 25 plus years ago and now and i'm specifically asking about you know sushi places that uh, uh seafood places asian style uh, because when I came to the United States and I came about 23, 25 years ago, I remember the sushi places, they're completely different. I mean, first of all, your place is unique from the beginning. It's, uh, I mean, you don't see a lot of sushi places with interior and the background music and the bar and the bartenders and the staff as friendly, as cozy. Uh, if you think everybody has it, no, they don't. But what what about back then? It was the same, or it, you guys developed into something different? Well, my very first restaurant, it was the same traditional Japanese restaurant like everyone else. Uh, but after several mistakes and uh, meeting very good friends and joining up and making up a, a, a group of uh, professional chefs, um, we decided to open up partnership uh, one restaurant in downtown um, Starfish. Mm -hmm. It was off uh, Randolph and Halstead. Oh, that's right, right in the town. And we wanted to do uh, Japanese fusion mm -hmm. and ch change things to, because uh, at that time, most Japanese, most traditional Japanese restaurants were small, um, Asian Japanese feel, not modern, and the menu, even the menu is is all in Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, the servers, the Japanese only spoke Japanese, barely any uh, English. Even the Japanese chef couldn't speak English. <laughs> you know, so a lot of uh, non-Japanese people who came in, they really didn't know how to order, you know, anything, unless they had a translator. So 
Uh, back then, it was no internet, so it was pretty much no translator. Yeah, there was no internet, no nothing. So they would point the finger. I want this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at that time, you know, when our uh, group got together, we wanted to, you know, ch change the menu from Japanese to English. Yeah, uh, so, you know, for even the Japanese name for fish for like tuna, it's, it's maguro, you know. Mm -hmm. But maguro just means uh, tuna. Mm -hmm. But there is uh, different kind of tunas and different names for uh, uh, tuna for in Japanese. Mm -hmm. Now there is also in English also. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to change uh, Japanese menu into English menu and have even servers um, who spoke English mm -hmm. uh, near perfect, <laughs> you know, uh, where um, non-Japanese can understand English. Okay. Um, so they can explain about the menu, the item, how it's prepared, how you're served. Um, give suggestions about you know what they like but what, what their preference is then we can give suggestions of what they would like in our menu. Food is very important to restaurant but another thing is the very, very important thing is, is to take care of the customers I think. I mean just very simple thing that we can do. Just hello, hi, how was everything? That's important. Yeah yeah, yeah that's makes yeah, yeah, make yeah. the business person. Yeah yeah so I always to tell my guys, just say hello. How are you? How was everything? Very simple things. These customers make happy and they remember the customers' name. I think it's very, very important. It is important. Yeah. yeah it's really different. Yeah, right. So once again, we're at the Starfish in Lincoln Shire. It's the northwest suburb of Chicago. And we're talking to the head chef of the Starfish. And uh, please don't forget to come here and or you can order pretty much anything you want. If it's something not on the menu, they can make it for you. And uh, from what I was told, the menu design in a way when you can come here and order uh, food from the least expensive to the most expensive. So if you're the student or if you're the professor, it's always you can always come here and find food for your pocket or for your taste. Once again, that's a head chef, and we're the start for the Starfish Sushi. Thank you. Thank you very much.